The data job market is absolutely brutal right now, unless you know where to look. And I just web scraped and analyzed 6,512 real data job postings from my own data job board, finddatajob.com, to uncover the absolute best and worst states for becoming a data analyst in 2026. And trust me, some of these results are going to shock you. So let's go ahead and start with the states you should probably avoid at all costs. And to do this analysis, we are basically looking at where each state is located in the job description and tallying the number of open data jobs in each respective state. Now, theoretically, if all things were equal and every state was the exact same and random, each state would have about 2% of the data jobs because there's 50 states and one divided by 50 is 2%. So that will be the reference that we're measuring everything against. So where are the worst places to live in the US if you're looking to land a data analyst role? Well, on the outside looking in, you have Alaska at number seven, you have Maine at number six, and you can see that these are both well below the expected 2% line. Coming in at number five, we have West Virginia. Number four is Delaware. Number three is Wyoming. Number two is Vermont. And the worst place to become a data analyst in the United States is number one, North Dakota. Now let's talk about each one of these for a second and talk about why they might be in the bottom. Starting with West Virginia, there's 1.8 million people living there, but it is kind of like an older state that's really kind of reliant on coal energy. There's lower education. There's not really a major urban city. In fact, off the top of my head, I don't know if I could name one city in West Virginia. Sorry, West Virginia. Some of the geography might be tough there with mountains. Apparently online, once again, not a great Wi-Fi structure. Who knows? Delaware is pretty small and it's overshadowed by the Philadelphia and New York City markets. So if you're gonna get like a really good data job, there's probably better opportunities in those two markets and they're pretty close. So I guess that's why Delaware is in the bottom five. Wyoming, my neighbor here in Utah, lowest populated state, not many people living there, like 500,000 people. There's energy, there's mining, there's a little bit of tourism, but that's pretty much it. Not really ripe for data jobs. Vermont, 600,000 people, not that many, very rural, very tourism based. Shout out to Cynthia, who you guys might have seen on this channel before. She was one of my accelerator students that I've interviewed who went from being a teacher to a data analyst. And she actually lives in Vermont. And she can tell you that it is a hard place to land a data job. Uh, and the two data jobs that she's landed since transitioning from a teacher have both been remote. And then number one, North Dakota, 800,000 people live there. It's pretty much farmland and oils and their winters are really harsh. So I can definitely see why that would be the worst place to become a data analyst. By the way, if you're from one of these states or living in one of these states and you're listening to this right now, hey, please drop a comment and say hello in the chat. I'd love to hear from all you bottom data staters and I'd like to hear you say if you agree or not, like is your state a good place to be a data analyst or is it like I said, a bottom five state. Now, if those states have the lowest number of data jobs, what states have the highest number of data jobs? Let's get into it. But before we do, I should probably tell you that I didn't do this analysis on my own. And I actually had a lot of help from the students inside of my bootcamp, the Data Analytics Accelerator. They actually are the ones who crunched the numbers and created a lot of these data visualizations that you'll be seeing in this episode. And that's because I actually give my students inside of the Accelerator a chance to intern for me and my company to do real analysis just like this. And it's actually a win-win because I get help analyzing data like this that I can talk about in my episodes. And the students get the chance to say that they've worked as a data analyst on their resume and LinkedIn. And that's real experience that looks impressive to hiring managers and recruiters. And that's one of the most important things that you can do when you're trying to land your first data job is you really want to have some sort of data job on your resume already. And so this internship program works really well because they get to actually put the word data analyst on their resume, on their LinkedIn, and have some good bullet points that they can put underneath that, like created data visualization, went through you know 6,000 rows of data, so on and so forth. So huge shout out to our internship team for this project, Moise Nirali, Ani Mahelian, Mukta Pandey, Amanda Ward, and Sebastian Wang. You should check out all of their LinkedIn profiles in the show notes down below, especially if you're hiring because these are some sharp analysts. And if you want to do an internship with me and my company, well, that's one of the benefits you get when you join the Accelerator. And you can learn more about My Data Bootcamp in the show notes down below. We'd love to have you, and who knows, maybe it'll be your face and your name popping up on the next video we do. What are the best states to be looking for a data job inside the United States? So outside looking in, you have Illinois and Florida. And you can see that these are both well above that expected 2% rate. Coming in at number five, we have Virginia, number four, Washington, number three, New York, number two, Texas, 
And number one, drum roll please, it is California. So why are these the top five? Well, if we go back and we think about Virginia, there is a ton of government contracting there. There's defense, there's government, as well as Amazon's second headquarters are there. So that makes sense. Lots of data jobs there. Next is Washington, and that's where Microsoft and Amazon have their headquarters. Meta and Google also have huge offices there as well. So it's a huge tech hub, and there's lots of data jobs available. New York, well, I mean, it's the finance capital of the world. This is going to be Wall Street, hedge funds, fintech. A lot of big companies have offices in New York, so... This totally makes sense. Next is Texas, and there's 30 million people live in Texas. That is a lot of people. And there's four big cities, Austin, Dallas, San Antonio, and Houston. And that's actually where I used to live. I moved from Utah to Houston to work as a data analyst, a data scientist, really. But there's oil and gas companies. There's tons of healthcare companies. And there's a lot of these tech companies that are actually moving from California to Texas. So it's only getting more and more popular for jobs. Lastly, there's California. It's huge. 40 million people, three really big cities, Los Angeles, San Francisco, San Diego, tons of tech startups, lots of like the big companies have their headquarters here, Google, Meta, Apple, Netflix, like there's a ton of data jobs here. It makes sense. This is number one. Now, looking at these top five states, you might be thinking, well, duh, of course, California and Texas have the most jobs. That makes a lot of sense because they have the most people. And you'd be exactly right. I'm not going to argue with you on that. These are massive states with huge populations. And it's not really fair to compare a state like California to Alaska. There's just so many more people, right? And that's the thing, raw job counts, they don't really tell you your actual odds of landing a position or which states are easier to land a data job. They're just telling you what states have more jobs. But let me ask you this, would you rather compete for 500 job openings with 5 million competitors or five job openings for 10 people? It's the latter, right? And that's what we do as data nerds. We need to factor in the population and look at the jobs per capita. So how many data analyst opportunities exist per 1 million residents of the state? And that's actually going to be a much better metric because that shows us which states have a lot of job openings, even though it might have a lot of people and which states are maybe prioritizing data roles relative to their size. And so when we do this normalization for the populations, the rankings kind of completely flip. So after normalizing for state population, where are the worst states to try to become a data analyst? Maine comes in at number seven, Kentucky at number six, Delaware at five, Wyoming at four, West Virginia at three, Vermont at two, and still the worst place to be a data analyst, North Dakota. And what about the best states to become a data analyst after normalizing? Well, Georgia and Rhode Island are at six and seven. Then we hop into newcomer Massachusetts at five. At number four, we have New York, which remains in the top five. Number three is Virginia. Number two is Washington. And number one, you'll never guess. I promise you won't guess. Like literally try to guess. You're not going to get it right. Number one place to be a data analyst in the United States is the District of Columbia. So let's talk about this. Now, I know technically it's not a state, but I don't even know exactly what it is. Regardless, it's super tiny geographically. Not a lot of people live there, but there is tons and tons of jobs there specifically for the government because this is basically the heart of Washington, D.C. Now, I know this is kind of cheating, probably because we're taking the population of District of Columbia, which is very low. And most people who actually work in the District of Columbia probably don't actually live there. They probably live around the area like Maryland or Virginia, but it's hard to actually do that analysis. Hard to know. It is worth noting that Virginia came in at three, which would kind of take in some of this DC job ideas. So this is a great place to live if you're trying to land a data job. Washington State, very awesome. Lots of data jobs over there. Obviously, New York, just full of jobs. And Massachusetts it's coming in at five. Well, there's really a lot of good colleges there, Harvard, MIT, UMass, all that stuff. And there's a biotech pharma hub up there. So they're hiring a lot of data people up there and there's lots of good jobs available. Now you may have noticed that we lost Texas and California in the top five, and it's probably because they have such huge populations. But I'm curious if you notice any other significant drops or increases when we normalize by population. It's a little hard to tell just based off of the top five that I gave you. So what we did is we created a slope chart that shows you how the rankings change when you start to normalize by population. And just as a quick aside, I love slope charts. They're amazing and they're fantastic for this use case when you're showing changes as like a before and an after. It makes it super easy to see all the differences. So the left-hand side is the state rankings when just comparing the raw total job counts without factoring in population at all. And the right is the rankings when you've already done the normalization and you're comparing with that normalized data. 
the highest rankings are at the top and the lowest rankings are at the bottom. And I color coded it by the change in the rankings. So the most positive changes, those are gonna be the dark blue and the biggest negative drops are gonna be kind of that dark orange color. So if you're watching on video, hit pause and let me know what stands out to you in the comments. Anything interesting? Maybe go ahead and find your state, see how it ranks, see if it went up or down by population. And a reminder, if you're listening, I've included a link to all the graphs in the show notes down below so you can check it out later. Or you can just make sure that you're subscribed to my free newsletter as I send these types of graph in each one of my newsletters every single week. So you can subscribe at datacareerjumpster.com slash newsletter, or you can find the link in the description of the episode. So now you know the best and the worst states to try to land a data analyst role. And you still should know what skills to learn and the right steps to actually landing that data job. So I've created another episode for you to watch that will basically explain all that. If you're on YouTube, you can click right here. Or if you're listening to the audio, I'll have a link in the show notes down below. Good luck and may the odds be ever in your favor.